in our ways. Amen? God leads our ways. Now, if we're going to study the book of Proverbs, it's all about uh, instruction of wisdom pertains to the young and also for those, uh, uh, I would say, uh, inexperienced people and as well to those learned people. Now, here in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, now we can see here the key verses that we can see here in verses number 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Now this is the promise God's people have often, uh, uh, I would say, claim as they have sought the Lord's direction and leading in their lives. And this is also the promise that has never failed. Do you believe in that? Because the promise of God never fails. And... Uh, we have to see as well that if we continue to obey the commandments of the Lord or the conditions of the Lord, God is always laying down here in verses uh, 1 to 12 all of those things and instruction that He wants us to do in our lives, in our service towards Him. As well, we have to put in mind that uh, God is keeping His promises. When we obey His precepts, uh, because our obedience prepares us to receive and enjoy what He has planned for us. So God leads our ways. Now point number one, I have only two points here this afternoon. Number one, our responsibi responsibility to fulfill. We can see that here in verses number one to twelve. Now first, under this, we have our responsibility to fulfill is that we have to learn God's truth. Amen? Now, as all we can see here in verses number 1 to 4, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee, bind them about thy neck, write them upon the table of thine heart, so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God. Now we have to understand that the will of God is revealed here in the word of God. It is revealed here in his word, which is our, the Bible, which is the final authority. Now he, let us take a look in Colossians 1, 9 to 10, please. Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 to 10. The Bible tells us, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now we have to understand that the desire that ye might be, what according to the word of God, ye might be filled with the knowledge of uh, let's go again first, please. Verse 9. Knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now, as what we're going to... Uh, uh, as what we can see here, Paul analyzes and Paul says here that Paul prayed that they, he, that they would have what? Knowledge of His will. That people here will have a knowledge of His will and inform that the true spiritual understanding here is what? To know God and what He requires us is to what? Our first responsibility as a believer. Now in verse 10, as we continue please, it says that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Not only that Paul prayed for uh, uh, that they would have knowledge of his will, but also he also prayed that they would live according to as the same knowledge that they received from the Lord. That is why the will of God is revealed in his word. Amen? And the only way to know his will is to study the word of God. Study to show thyself a proven to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divi dividing the word of truth. Why? His will is to what? To study His word and what? To obey it. That, that's what we need to do. That's our responsibility to learn God's truth. 
No, by receiving the word within our hearts here, we experience now growth in godly character so that the mer that mercy and truth here that is mentioned here in uh, verse 3 that, ha that has love and faithfulness become our beautiful ornaments in our lives. Here in verse 3, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. And also in uh, Proverbs chapter 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible tells us, for they shall be an ornament, here, ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. Next. That is why it isn't enough that we believers, we the children of God, we're just only carrying the Bible in our hands, but they must let here the Holy Spirit write it on their hearts. Let the Holy Spirit work in it's every one of us. Now, also here in uh, chapter 7, verse 3, let us go there, please. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 3. It is very clear here in the Word of God that bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. Why? Obedience to the word can add years to your life. That's what the Bible tells us. And life to your years. Now, working with God is, uh, um, is very challenging. Amen? We might experience up, uh, ups and downs. But again, as we continue to walk along that way, uh, uh, on the path that God has prepared for us, then we can see His mighty hand that continues to work with us. Learn God's truth. Not only that, our responsibility to fulfill. Here in verses 5 to 8. Now we can see here, verses 5 to 8. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. A very familiar verse. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, verse 7, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy, to thy bones. Not only that, not only learn God's word, uh, God's truth, but we have to obey God's will as well. He shall direct thy paths. He shall direct your ways. Now, oh, this is the promise of God. But the fulfillment of that promise here is predicated on our obedience to Him. Take note of that. Our obedience to the Lord. So we must trust Him with all our heart and obey Him in all our ways. That's how God wants us to do. That means that the total commitment to Him uh, here in Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. A very familiar verse as well. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, ac holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and, and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen? By the mercies of God. Reminds us that we do this because of the mercy that God has shown to each every one of us. God is merciful. Amen? That's why we have to give a chance to people. That's why we have to help those people who, who fell down. We, we, we need to encourage those people who need our encouragement. Instead of biting them. Why? We are all children of God. I'm talking about those who are saved. No? I'm talking about the mercy of God that is uh, working in our lives. Why? We can see here that we are only able to offer ourselves to God as He works. And His mercy in us that God commanded us to do this and He makes it possible for us to do it. That's what this verse is telling us. That is why the word here translated here in uh, chapter 3 verse 5 of Proverbs, trust. Oh, trust in the Lord. It means lie helpless to face down. 
It is a picture of a servant waiting to, for the master's command in readiness to obey. That's what trust means here. Or a defeated soldier yielding himself to the conquering general. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. But again, the problem here, there are dangers, of course, according to the word of God. Why? Because we people, we keep on leaning on our own understanding. And that is the problem. And thereby we miss God's will in our lives. Why? This warning doesn't suggest that uh, uh, God's uh, children turn uh, their uh, uh, understanding or their brains and try to ignore those intelligences that they have and common sense, but it is simply cautious as not to depend on our own wisdom and experience or the wisdom and experience of others. Obey God's will in our lives. And that is very clear. We have heard many kinds of messages in this book. Now, what happened here? If you could remember Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse number 10 to 20, right? When he went to Egypt, when there was a famine in the land of Canaan, no? you know what happened to that story? I preached that message before. No? He leaned on his own understanding. And the same thing as what happened to uh, Joshua in the book of uh, Joshua chapter 7. No? After that uh, victory, uh, at Jericho, the next uh, city that they need to conquer is the Ai, which is a very small city. No? Here, what happened here is that, was that Joshua leaned on his own understanding. He said, okay, let's just send some few men. But what happened? No? They were embarrassed. They were defeated by AI. Don't lean on your own understanding. Because when we become wise in our own eyes, here in verse 7, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. What will happen if we keep on yielding or depending on our own wisdom and understanding? Then we're heading to, into trouble. So obey God's will. Not only that, our responsibility. Learn God's truth, obey God's will, and share God's blessing. Here in verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with a substance, with the first, oh, first fruit of all thine increase. No. I will just uh, give you a few uh, explanations of that later on. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Now another thing, our responsibility here is to share God's blessing. Amen? If you want God to lead our way, there's no such thing here as okay, spiritual and material in the Christian life. Why? Because everything comes from God. Everything you have right now in your hands, everything that you have right now in your possession comes from God. Oh, everything belongs to God. That's why the Old Testament Jews, Jews here brought the Lord, the firstlings of the flocks. In Exodus 13, 1 and 2. Let's go there, please. Exodus thir uh, 13, 1 and 2. Exodus 13, 1 and 2. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of men and of beast. It is mine. And then another one here, the first fruit of the fields. Leviticus 23, 9 to 14. Uh, it's very understandable, amen? And the Lord spake unto Moses, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. And ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf, and he lamb, lamb, Without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. 
And verse 13, And the meat offering thereof shall be two tenth deals of fine flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savour, and the drink offering thereof shall be of wine, the fourth part of an hin. Verse 14, please. And ye shall eat neither bread, nor patched corn, nor green ears, until the selfsame day that ye have brought, brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Now we have to understand here that the day the following here about the Passover Sabbath was the time to give the first fruits of the harvest to God. It's all about fruits. The idea was to dedicate the first ripened stocks here of the grain to God in anticipation of a greater harvest to come. That's why when we speak about uh, first fruit, we're not talking here about money. Amen? If you go, if you, even if you read in the New Testament, you can read the word first fruit there, but it does not pertain to money. Why? In this way, they acknowledge His goodness and sovereignty. Amen. This is the purpose. That's why the New Testament here parallel is seen in Matthew 6.33. If you will go there, you have memorized it, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things shall be added, added unto you. That's why if you don't uh, faithfully uh, give something to the Lord, again, we don't really trust the Lord. Now, we have to understand that our offerings are not payments, actually. These are not payments okay, for his blessings, but rather our evidence of our faith and obedience towards him. That's why we keep. That's why it's important to have a cheerful heart as well when you give. Now, according to a Christian industrial, uh, industrialist, R.G. Letourneau, used to say, if you give because it pays, it won't pay. If your purpose is that, because if I will give this, then God will return it back to me, then it won't pay. If that is your purpose, why you give? You give because you love the Lord. You give because you know that it is the right to give in order to support the work of the Lord. You give because it is your desire to give for the work of the Lord. We need to, uh, to have those kind of heart. That is why giving is heart preparation for what God wants to say to us and do for us. Now, Let's uh, take a look in uh, Matthew 6.21. Let's go there, please. For where your, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now, here we can see that Jesus here draws the conclusion that you can only have your treasure, and that is your heart, no? in one place and we can't lay up treasure on earth and on heaven at the same time. We cannot do that. All right. We cannot bring uh, these possessions to heaven. Amen. All of the things that we have will remain here on earth. And one, th one more thing. Our responsibility to fulfill here in verses 11 and 12. The Bible tells us, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be wary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as the Father, the Son, in whom he delighteth. Again, uh, Pastor uh, explained this to us uh, uh, during our uh, prayer meeting. So you already have that uh, idea. Uh, I mean, you already have idea with regards to this. Now, another thing is that submit to God's chastening. Submit to God's chastening. Now, chastening is part of God's plan to help His children mature in godly character. That is the purpose. Amen? That is the purpose. If we're going to read that in Hebrews chapter 12, verses number 1 to 11. 
No, uh, just take down uh, if you're writing there. Why God chastens us not to judge us like a uh, a criminal, but a parent that disciplines a child. Submit to God's chastening. Amen. Why? Remember that God acts in love. That's how we do these things. And His purpose is that we might become partakers of His holiness. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 10. That's the purpose. And sometimes He chastens us because we rebelled. We have rebelled and need to repent. That's the reason. And other times He chastens us to keep us from sinning and to prepare us for His special blessings. That's the purpose. That's why I submit to God's chastening. No matter how much the experience hurts us, we have to put in mind that it will never harm us. I mean, it will never harm us. It will never. Because God always, what? Chastens in love. I like that. Deuteronomy 8, 2-5, please. Let's see what... God did to the people of Israel. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee, amen, to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Verse 3, please. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. That's how good and faithful God to this people of Israel. Neither did thy fathers know that they might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. In verse 4, thy raiment wax not all upon thee. Amen. See the, the grace of God given to these people? They were stiff-necked. But see how God is working with them. Neither did thy foot swell. Imagine wa walking in that wilderness. It was a very hot and warm day during daytime. But, uh, and during at night it was very, very cold. These 40 years. And in verse 5, Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. What's the purpose? God humbled Israel. And he brought them to a place where all they need, all they could do was to depend on him. This is the purpose of God. They had nothing else and no one else to count on. You know, that's what God wants us to do. To depend on him at all times. And point number two. It will not take long. Here in verses 13 to 35. Not only uh, our responsibility to fulfill, but again, blessings to rejoice. Amen? Wow. Blessings to rejoice. You know what? Sitting here right now is already a blessing. Listening to God's word is already a blessing. Working in His vineyard is already a blessing. Most especially... The salvation that God, that Jesus Christ gave to us. What a blessing. That's why if we trust and obey, our Father will direct here our ways. Our Father will always lead us in our ways. Into a blessing, uh, to a, into a blessing that He has planned for us. Blessings to rejoice. Here in verses 13 to 18. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace she is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her and happy is everyone that retaineth her blessings to rejoice 
True wealth that comes from wisdom. True wealth that comes from wisdom. Now, we have to understand here that it is good to have uh, things uh, like money can buy. It's good to have that. And we really, uh, we really need that. Provided that you don't lose the things money can buy. But again, what good? What good is an expensive house? What good is an expensive car? If there's no happy, or if there's no happiness deep within. Amen? Now, I was uh, uh, watching, uh, listening to YouTube uh, last time about the life of Jack Ma, the founder of uh, Alibaba. He said, I have everything right now, but I'm not happy. <laughs> That's what he said. Coming from the mouth of a billionaire. That's what he said. Why? Happiness, pleasantness, and peace aren't guaranteed by products of financial success. We have to understand that. Yes, we have enough. And praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for that. But they are guaranteed to the person who lives by God's wisdom. We have to understand Wisdom becomes here the tree of life to the believers who take hold of the promises of God in his or in her life. True wealth that comes from wisdom. Now, we have to understand as well that if you are corrected, be thankful for it. Accept those corrections from you. Especially if you know that those corrections can help you grow or help you mature spiritually amen not only that blessings to rejoice harmony with god's creation amen here in verses 19 to 20 the lord by wisdom hath founded the earth by understanding hath he established the heavens by his knowledge the dead are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew harmony with god's creation that's why the person who walks according to God's wisdom can say, Thank you, Lord, for the trials that comes my way. Thank you, Lord, because you're always faithful in my life. And he can really uh, take that song within his heart. And every time he reads the word of God, then he knows that the word of God will always challenge him and will always challenge her to move on even in the difficult situation. Now, the wisdom of God brought everything into being. Now let's uh, proceed to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22, please. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of His way, before His works. Oh. Now, including here, uh, we're talking here about science. Uh, they have that, the law of nature. No? A natural relation of human beings or other animals due to native condition. And also, they said, obey these laws and creation will work with you. That's what I said. Disobey them, and creation will work against you. But again, people in this so-called new age, now when you say new age, or new age movement, they believe that people are free to decide what they believe and how they used it in their lives. That's according to new age movement. They tried to be at one with creation, but the problem is that they were doomed. They were doomed. Why? They were doomed to fail because they rejected the wisdom of God. Take note that Christians who live by God's wisdom will be good stewards in His creation and will use His gifts for His glory. That's why harmony with God's creation. Not only that, we have to put in mind the understanding. No, we have differences. Please take note of that. But again, that's the wisdom of God. Because out of, this, of those differences, 
Uh, see how God will uh, combine all these things to, uh, uh, to have a result that is God glorifying. Now, harmony with God's creation. Not only that, the blessings to rejoice, but as well in verses 21 to 26. Let us read. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul, soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy food shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither the desolation of the wicked, when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, amen, and shall keep thy, thy foot from being taken. Blessings to rejoice. The Father's providential, providential care. We have to understand that because God leads us in our path, He is also able to protect us. Amen? He is able to protect our path. The Lord isn't obligated because His children, uh, uh, I mean, the Lord isn't obligated to protect His children when they willfully go their own way. Take note of that. They are only tempting Him and that's a dangerous thing to do. That's a dangerous thing to do. No. Somebody said to a pastor, he approached the pastor and said, why doesn't God stop this terrible war? That's what he asked the pastor. But the pastor quietly replied and said, he doesn't stop, he doesn't stop it because he didn't start it. That's what the pastor said. It was started by people who rejected God's wisdom and pursued their own selfish plan. That's why sometimes we really don't understand what is happening around us. If we will not, uh, if we are not going to uh, really grasp the blessings from the Word of God and His directions in our lives. Why? People tend to uh, uh, do their own ways. That they think it's good for them. That's why when you surrender yourself to God, every part of your body belongs to Him and will be protected by Him. I'm talking about God. He will help you keep your eyes from wandering. Here, verse 21. Your necks from turning your face away from God's path. Why? Every time we read the Word of God, He will always remind us on what to do in our lives. That's the blessing from His Word. That's why they are new every morning. That's why the Bible tells us, Great is thy faithfulness. When you are sorry, go to the Word of God. When you have that fear, go to the Word of God. If you don't have that confidence, then go to the Word of God. And God will give you what the instructions for you to do. Again, Even when we sleep. Yeah. Somebody said, how we sleep is sometimes also evidence of how much we trust the Lord. Amen. When you ride a plane, when you're riding a plane, you might sit comfortably on the, uh, on the plane, Giving everything to God. You have that confidence that God will give you safety as you are going to the next embarkation. Not only that, blessings to rejoice. Verse number 27 to 35. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due. When it is in the power of thine hand to do it, say not unto thy neighbor, Go and come again, and tomorrow I will give, when thou hast it by thee. Devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Strive not with a man without cause. If he have done thee no harm, 
Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. For the forward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. Verse 33, The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. The wise shall not inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. Lastly, a positive relationship with others. This is very, very important. This is the fourth blessing that we can uh, rejoice when we walked in the wisdom of God. Wise Christian will be generous to his neighbors and live peaceably with them. That's what the Bible tells us in verses number 27 to 30 here in chapter 3. Doing their best to avoid unnecessary disagreements. Okay, let's proceed to Romans 12, 18. If it possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. But again, live peaceably with all men. Reminds us that though we are in contrast to the world, we don't seek out contention. But again, let me... Uh, give you a, a, another statement is that if it is possible we will be at peace with all men but on the other hand we have also to understand when it says if it be possible indicates that they that it may not always be possible amen because we really cannot avoid disagreements but again as long as we can do that we have to do it that's why, on the other hand, if our neighbor is a perverse, okay, or showing a deliberate desire to behave in a way that is unacceptable, uh, a person who scoffs at our faith, here in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 31 to 35, the Lord will guide us, what? Letting our light shine and His love to show that we will uh, influence Him but he won't lead or lead us astray. A positive relationship with others. Sometimes it takes a great deal of patience. It, it takes a great deal of prayer. Prayer and wisdom to rightly relate to the people who don't want Christians in the neighborhood. But always put in mind that that's the purpose of God. Why God plays or puts you in that area. Take note that it is, it is possible to have godly home in the midst of ungodly neighborhood. It is possible. For God, according to the, here in uh, verse 33, but He blesseth the habitation or the home of the just. Take note before we end that we are the salt of the earth. Amen. And the light of the world. And one dedicated Christian in a neighborhood can make a great deal of difference and be a powerful witness for the Lord. So those are the blessings that we can rejoice. Amen. Responsibilities to fulfill. Because God leads our ways. We have to put in mind as well before we end. Yeah. That God is always gracious. We may sometimes go and follow our own way. But again, because of His grace and mercy, God will always let you, or God will always allow you to return on the right course and move forward. That's how good our God is. Shall we all stand, please?